Hi guys. Hi. Welcome. All right. Welcome everyone. We're going to start in a second. I'm just going to give everyone maybe another minute or two to join us. And then we're going to start. So in the meantime, just make sure you have all your canvases ready. You can use any size and all the other supplies too. And we'll go through a list of supplies in a second. So I'm just going to wait another minute or two. Make sure we have everyone that we need, everyone who was hoping to join today. Because I know a lot of people prefer to paint from the recording because then you can pause it, um, take a break if you need to. So that's okay too. But yes, for anyone who wants to paint with us live today, we'll wait a couple more minutes. And then we'll start. Yeah, and this is what we're painting. It's a lot of fun. And the good news, it's not very complicated. It's one of those paintings that um, shouldn't scare you. Hi, yes, hi, everyone. Yeah, I know with the lockdown, so hard to get canvases nowadays. You can totally see the videos later, absolutely. It's going to be available um, whenever you're ready for it. So if you can't join us tonight, that's okay too. Or if, let's say, you just want to hang out with us and paint at a later time, that's okay too. Yes, good point. Guys, with YouTube Live, if you need a bit more time for every step, because I'm going to be going at my pace, and also based on what feedback I get from you as far as um, how many good to goes I get or how many I need a minute I get. But if you find that it takes a little bit longer because maybe you're a perfectionist, you can always just pause the video and give yourself enough time and then resume it whenever you're ready. And yes, definitely, if you want to subscribe to our channel, we will never say no to that. Feel free to do that. All right, so, all right, I think it's been enough time so we can start. Um, how long do I expect to take? Um, this one is pretty fast. I would say probably just over an hour. Again, depending on how fast we go, if you guys are a fast group, we're going to be done in about an hour. If you guys are slightly slower than that, that's okay. I usually just try to go at the pace of the group because you know every group is different because we all are different. Some are more perfectionist, some are more on the fly people who like everything done fast, quick and fast and out and be done with it. So we'll see, there is no way to tell. It's anywhere between an hour to three hours. But yeah, this one is pretty simple. So I wouldn't expect it to go really long. Let's say in for an hour to hour and a half. Um, if we go really slow, maybe two hours. But again, we wouldn't know. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys. Welcome, everyone. If we haven't met before, my name is Vera. And I will be your instructor for tonight. And this is what I'm painting. Again, it's pretty simple. But it is also a lot of fun. And there are quite a few tricky elements here. For example, flowers. Flowers are probably the trickiest element in here. Water is not that difficult. Um, sky is not that difficult. 
clouds, I find that clouds can be tricky to some people. Um, yeah, but flowers is probably are the most intricate element here, which it's so worth it. All right, so let's go through our supplies to make sure we have everything that we need for today. First thing you're going to need is canvases. You can use absolutely any size that you would like. There is no um, particular size that you have to have. We're, a lot of us are in a lockdown, so whatever you have available, that's what you're gonna use. This particular painting was created on 16 by 20 inch canvas, but I'm gonna be using a slightly smaller one today. I'm gonna be using my second favorite size, which is 16 by 14 inches. It still is not a small canvas really, but it is a little bit smaller. But again, feel free to use whichever canvas you have. There is no, it's the same steps um, will apply regardless of the size of your canvas. The only difference is you're gonna need to change the size of your brushes based on the size of your canvas. So if let's say you go with 16 by 14, you might wanna use slightly smaller brushes if you go by with 16 by 20. And the same if you go with even smaller one, let's say eight by 10, of course you're gonna need to adjust the size of brushes as well. So that's pretty much it. That's all you need to know about canvas. I'm gonna put it aside for now. Second thing we're going to need is water. So make sure you have painting water. Again, very important, you can't paint without water. <laughs> All right, and we're going to need a palette, another very important thing, something to mix our paint on. We're going to need a paper towel or a cloth or a napkin or toilet paper, something to uh, dab our brush on, something that will absorb the water. So in my case, it's gonna be this paper towel today. And of course, brushes and paint, I will be using very standard set, large, medium, and small brushes. So that's what we usually use. We use one bigger brush, one smaller brush, and one really small brush. I'm gonna be using square, medium, square, large, and small, detailed brush. So that's my set for today. Now, whether your brush is square or pointy doesn't matter at all for this painting. In fact, you might find it easier to do it with non-square brush, but if you have both square and pointy, even better, then you can just try both and see which one works better for you. So that's pretty much it. And paint. Again, I'm gonna be using standard set, what we usually use, which is primary colors only, which is blue, yellow, red, plus black and white. And I'll be mixing all those colors here. However, if you guys have pre-mixed green, you might find it helpful. And if you have pre-mixed sand color, you might find that very helpful. If you don't, um, we can mix it together, but also sand color, it's easier if you have pre-mixed brown color. So if you have that, great, grab it, we can use it. If not, no big deal, we'll mix them all together, so nothing to stress about. So just grab all the paints that you have, really. Don't put them on your palette yet. We'll put them as I as we go. Once we get to certain steps, I'll tell you which colors to put in your palette. For now, don't pre-put all of them on a palette because some of them we might end up not using and you don't want to waste that. So that's the whole set. Now let me tell you how we're going to do this, what we're going to start with and where we're going to go. So we're going to start with the sky here and we're going to work from blue, to white, so we'll do this gradient from medium blue to white. So we'll do medium blue, light blue, blend them, light blue to white, blend them. Once we have that, we're gonna move on to our sand. So we'll make sand color, and we'll add it on this bottom part here. Once we have that, only after that, we're gonna move on to our water. And we're gonna work from uh, medium dark blue to light teal. So we'll create a gradient. After that, we're gonna move on to our um, clouds and island behind here. So we'll add that, clouds will be done in white, island here will be done in a couple different shades of green, and there'll be some reds there and some blacks. Um, then we're gonna move on to a little bit of white on the bottom of the water here, where our water meets our sand, so a little bit of white there. 
Um, then we'll move on to flowers because flowers will take a few layers. So we'll start with just one layer. One, while that one layer is drying, we're gonna move back here and we will add a bit more streaks on the water. We'll add our little boat here, maybe some birds. And once um, first layer of our flowers is dry, we're gonna add second layer because it does take quite a few layers to get our flowers the way we want it. And they have to have a drying time in between. So we'll, we'll work a little bit here, then we'll move here while this is drying, then go back and so on. We're just gonna try to use our time wisely. So we're not just sitting and waiting. We can work on different areas while certain areas are dry. So that's pretty much it. I hope that makes sense. And again, if you guys can do it um, today, you can always do it later. The video is gonna be right here. It's not going anywhere. So um, yeah, and you can pause as well. All right, so grab your canvases and put on your palette two colors, white and primary blue. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put on my palette two colors, white and primary blue. If you don't have primary blue, I would say any blue will work as long as it's not too light. It has to be either dark blue or like a medium dark blue. And I'm gonna grab my large brush. So I would suggest you grab your large brush as well, regardless of the size of the canvas, unless you're going really small, in which case you can use medium brush. But if you're doing my size, which is 16 by 14, or like that size, 16 by 20, grab big brush. So I'm gonna grab big brush and I'm gonna start with medium, medium dark blue. So I'm gonna scoop some white on the side and I will add some blue to it. And I would make about medium to medium dark blue. You see, this is the blue I make. This is my primary blue. It's very dark. That's why I'm mixing it with some white. So it's a little bit lighter. It doesn't have to be very light. We still want it on a darker side, but just not crazy dark. And I'm actually gonna move this painting a little lower. That seems a little too high. You guys to see them at the same time. And with this brush full of this color, medium dark blue, I'm gonna go on top of this canvas. So right here. And I'll color in just like a little chunk. You see, and if you want to have your edges done, you can do them as you go. That's the best way to do it. It takes maybe extra minute tops, but it will look really good unless you are holding your canvas in your hands. A lot of the times, in which case you probably shouldn't do your edges because then all the paint is gonna end up on your hands and none of your canvas. But if you are not holding your canvas, if it's positioned where it's gonna be positioned the entire event, then go for it, do your edges right away. So. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the top edge right away. And wherever this paint goes to the sides. I'm going to add it there as well. Maybe I will go even a little bit lower. All right, now right away, as soon as you have that, we need to move to the next color. We can't really wait um, in between these colors because we have to finish the entire top on wet. So as soon as you have your first color, you're gonna wash off your brush. You don't have to wash it well, just wash it off somewhat. And then I'm gonna grab some white and I'm gonna add more white into the same color. Or you can grab a little bit of that blue and white and mix it depending on how much wood you have left. If you almost run out, you can mix white and tons, just stop, take a little bit and add some white and mix it on a separate spot. We're trying to make light blue here. So this is just regular light blue, nothing special about it. And with this light blue, I'm gonna go right underneath and I'll add section that's, let's say a little bit smaller than my top section. You see like that, and I'm gonna go a little bit higher right under that previous blue. And of course, I'm gonna do my edges right away. And then as soon as I have that, I'm gonna start blending it up into the darker blue. And how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna continue going with 
um, horizontal breaststrokes. So left, right, left, right. But I will go a little bit up with that into this darker blue without refilling my brush with paint. You just want to use a little bit that you have left. So go up and then as you uh, don't go all the way to the top, go a little bit higher, but not all the way to the top. So for example, when I reached here, I'm going to start going down with the same kind of brush strokes down. And that what that will do, it will pick up a bit of fresh paint from the bottom, spread it to the top, pick up a little bit fresh paint from the top, spread it to the bottom and so on. So do you see now just in a few brush strokes, I have a perfect blending. And of course, if you guys are using slightly bigger canvas, it will take you a little longer because the bigger you go, even though it's the same technique, it's the same um, steps. There's absolutely not, nothing different regardless of size. Just because of the sheer area that you need to cover, it will take a little bit longer with the bigger sizes. And last one, I'm gonna do straight white. So as soon as I have that, I'm actually gonna move on to straight white. I'm gonna wash off my brush. I will take straight white and I will add maybe the same section in size underneath with straight white. And my brush was a little dirty, so there is a little bit of blue in it, but that's okay because we're actually gonna blend the top blue into this white. So it will be a little bluer in the end. So do you see, this is my third section. I know it's hard to see, so I'm gonna show you on a glare. That's my third section. And now I'm just gonna start blending this white into my medium blue. So I'm gonna continue adding brush strokes up and down, left and right. So left and right going up. Then once I reach about medium, middle of the section, I'm gonna turn direction differently. So still get, doing brush strokes left and right, I'm gonna start going down because my brush just picked up enough of that blue paint to spread it into my white. And you can continue doing that as long as you need to, but it usually gets blended pretty fast. So you shouldn't need to do that for a long time. And here we go. My blending goes right up to here, as you can see on the glare, but now it's blended from white to light blue to darker blue. And I did my edges too, but if you haven't done your edges, that's okay. You can always do your edges last thing. I just personally find that it's easier to do them uh, right away as you go. Totally up to you. All right, guys, let me know. Give me thumbs up when you have it. Say good to go in chat um, or thumbs up already and so on. And then we'll move to our next step here. But I will give you guys a few minutes. All right, yes, good to go, perfect. All right, I see thumbs up. That's good.
All right, lots more thumbs ups. That's good. That's good, guys. Okay, so I see a lot of people are ready, which is great. So we're gonna move to our sand then. Now we're gonna make something that looks like a sand color, which is, there are a lot of different colors that can be a sand color. So as long as it's in that spectrum of sand colors, it's a good color. For those of you who have pre-mixed brown, you can just grab a little bit of pre-mixed brown, mix it with some white, and that will give you beige color. And then based on what color that turned into, you can adjust it by either adding a little bit more yellow or a little bit more red. For example, if it's a little too pinky, depending on which brown you had. If you had like a red-ish brown, like this brown, for example, that will probably be um, really warm if you mix it with um, white. So you might need to adjust it. But if you do have premixed brown, put a premixed brown on your palette and just mix it tiny touch of brown with some white. For those of us who are using just primaries, we actually gonna need to mix our brown first. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my red, my yellow, and my black on a palette. Oh, here's my palette. And I'm gonna mix my brown with a medium brush. So I'm gonna start by mixing some yellow with some red. Oh, it's about equal parts. You don't need much of it, so don't make tons of brown. Just a little bit of brown is more than enough. So I'll mix equal parts of red and yellow. Then I'll start adding black little by little, so tiny touch by tiny touch. Take a little bit of black, mix it in, and that might be enough, and you might not need any more of it. Or it may not be enough, and then you need to add another smidge. So in my case, this is pretty good. It turned into brown right away. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna empty my brush as good as I can, and then I'm gonna scoop some white on a side, and I'll use just a little bit of that brown, and mix it with my white. And you see what happened? It turned into sand color right away. So it's just nice, light, beigey color. Now, if, for example, for you, it didn't turn into the color you desired, it didn't turn into a sand color right away, you can always adjust it. Again, if it looks a little too pinkish or like even has an under hint, like hint of purple, undertone of purple, you can always add a little bit more yellow. That will fix it for you. Just don't add too much. You always want to add tiny smidge by tiny smidge. And the other way around, if it looks a little too yellow or too orangey, you can always add a little bit more um, red or pink to fix that and really orangey or like coral in a way you're gonna need to add a little bit more black that means you have too much red and yellow and not enough of the darkness so you just need a tiny smidge of black to dim it up a little i'm actually gonna make a bit more of this color because I will need it. I'm gonna switch my brush. Oh, 
All right, guys, and if anyone is struggling with making sand color, let me know what exactly is happening for you, what is the problem you're experiencing, and I'll try to guide you to um, fix that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my large brush. Do you see it's nice and clean? There should be no blue in it, and it needs to be wet, again, because we're working on a background. And I'm gonna grab a brush full of this color, and I'm gonna go on the bottom of my canvas. So right here, and I'll color this bottom line first. But then as I go up, I'm gonna start adding more brush strokes in this um, half circular shape, like a little curve here. On how far I'm gonna go, pretty far. So if this is where my sky ends, do you see I'm almost filling half of this bottom part with the sand. And yes, you're not gonna see as much of it. We're gonna overlap water onto it, but we're gonna overlap water very transparent. So it looks like it's a very shallow water here. So you can see the sand through it. That's why we need to bring the sand pretty high up. And of course, if you're doing your edges, do them right away. If you're not doing your edges, that's okay too. All right, so this is what it looks like right now. Again, guys, take your time. Let me know when you have it. We're no, not in rush here. We don't need to blend anything on wet. Um, so if you need to take a little longer, that's okay. Just let me know when you have it. Say good to go, ready to move, so on. And then we'll move to the next step. Yes, it would look a little like a skin. You can always adjust it if you don't like that color. If you would color, just put your favorite color, whatever sand color you prefer, because you know, on different beaches in the world, sand looks different color. So choose your favorite, totally fine. I'm side by side. For a second you see my earlier one have a little has a little bit pinker sand but again it doesn't matter at all as we know sand comes in all colors so whichever one you choose that's okay as long as it's in that beigey category it's all good
All right, I see a couple thumbs ups and good to goes. I'll wait another minute and then we'll move. All right, I see more thumbs up. That's perfect, guys. If we are all ready, then we can start working on our water here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with blue that's similar to that, but maybe a little darker. And you can use either medium brush or large brush. I'm gonna continue going with the large brush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this one, my primary blue, which is, as you can see, it's a little bit dark. I'll put it here. And then to this color, I wanna make it slightly more teal. So I'm gonna add just a tiny, tiny touch of yellow. Do you see how little? Like a little corner. Mix it in, maybe a little more. But very little, do not add a lot. And it's gonna give it this teal undertone. It's gonna make it a little colder, which is what I want. And with this color, I'm gonna go right underneath the sky. So I'm gonna go right here, wherever you want your sky to end. I would say one third, third from the top is probably good. So around And you see, I made it a little bit thicker. Now, these colors we have to do right away. So we have to do them on wet. This is not something we have to, we can wait. We have to uh, move to next color right away. So next color is gonna be medium teal. So I'm gonna wash my brush just a little. I need more white actually. Then to that darker tealy blue, I'm gonna add some white. And even a little bit more yellow, just a little. You see it's nice and teal. You don't wanna turn it into green though. And once you have that, we're gonna move and add second color. So second color, I'm gonna add right in the middle of this, somewhere around here. And first, I'm just gonna color that entire section, including the edges. And after I have that, I'm gonna start blending it up. So again, the same way that we did the top, I'm gonna start with whatever I have left on the brush going up with my brush strokes. So left and right, left and right, but just go a little bit up into this darker blue and then go a little bit down into the steel. And what it will do, it will spread the wet paint from here to there and then it will pick up a little bit of that darker paint and spread it down. So it will create a transition color. And after that, right away, um, I'm gonna move on to the light teal which is the same thing, just with a little bit more white. So I'm gonna wash off my brush, dry it on a paper towel. I will add more white to this to make it nice and light. If you need to, you could always add a touch more yellow if it's getting too blue and not teal. And with this color, oh, actually I'm gonna make it even lighter. 
we're going to go on this very bottom. You see, I'm going to color in this section first. Again, including the edges. Then, before I start blending it up, I'm going to brush stroke it a little bit over my scent to make it look like there's very shallow areas that you can see scent through the water. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to very lightly brush stroke it on a sand area. So just lightly scrape the surface of your canvas. You see how transparent you can still see the sand through? And that's exactly what you want. You want that transparency where you can see the sand through. Just a little bit of that. And after that, once you have that, once your water is nicely merged into your sand, then we're gonna move to blend this light teal into this medium teal. And we'll do it the same way. We'll start at light teal and then continue doing those brush strokes going into the medium teal. And once we've gone far enough, we're gonna do it the other way around. Once our brush picked up a little bit of that medium teal, we'll spread it into the light teal. And again, you will see it will create a blending. So the goal is for us to have a three color blending here. Dark teal, medium teal, very light teal. And light teal need to be lightly overlapping the scent. So this is pretty much what we're looking for here. And again, this is what it looks like. This is good. I'm not gonna be doing anything else. This is perfect. I'm gonna let it be. <laughs> And I'm gonna wash off my large brush because I am done with it. I'm not gonna be using it anymore. I only needed it for the background. So that's good, that's done. And again, I'm gonna give you guys a second to do this and whenever you're ready, you can give me a thumbs up, let me know that you're ready. And then we'll move to next step. And of course, if anyone is having any difficulties, or find something tricky, let me know what you're struggling with in chat and I'll do my best to help you guys. And yes, it is going to be recorded. Uh, the video is gonna remain here, you can watch it anytime. All right, I see a couple good to goes. Perfect, more good to goes. That is wonderful, guys. All right, if we have a lot of people good to go, we can move to our sky. And what are we gonna do in our sky? And again, if you guys are not ready, that's okay. Take your time, don't try to um, rush through this. Just pause the video. So I'm gonna move on to the sky. We have quite a few clouds there. So we're gonna move on to clouds. I will be using medium brush, but you see what seems most comfortable based on the size of your canvas. I'll be using medium brush and white. And you're gonna need just a little bit of white, so don't grab a whole bunch, a brush full. Where's my favorite towel? Here it is. So I'm gonna empty my brush a little bit so I only have a little bit left. And with this, I'm gonna start adding clouds. So clouds are gonna have a fluffier middle and then they're gonna get more pointy on the sides. Do you see this is the top of my cloud? 
Well, I'm going to empty my brush even a little more, and I will do the bottom of my cloud. See, the bottom is a little straighter and less defined, and the top is a little more visible and a bit more uh, wavy in a way. So that's how I'm going to do all my clouds. Some of them are going to be more visible. Some of them are going to be less visible. And clouds are slightly tricky, so I would maybe suggest if this is your first time doing clouds, or maybe clouds are not the easiest thing for you personally, try them on a separate piece of paper first, or on your palette, or on a paper towel. You don't have to go right on a canvas with this. And I usually start in the middle. I make the taller middle, and then I make waves towards the sides to have a nice end, and then they just fluff up the bottom, but in somewhat straight line. Alternatively, I'm going to show you another way to do clouds. You can do it with your finger. And you can either take paint actually on your finger or you can just put a couple dots and then smudge them with your finger. Did you see a few dots? You see, I'm just doing rounded, like circular motion with my finger. And then once I have that, the top, I'm not going to touch. It needs to be a bit more defined and visible, but the bottom, I'm going to smudge a little more. So my cloud is a bit more defined and visible on top and a little bit more transparent on a bottom. So those are both good ways to do it. If you do it with a brush, they're going to be a bit more defined everywhere. With a finger, they're going to be a little more fluffy and cotton-like. So, but either is a good way to do it. I have to put another cloud here with now with a finger so it matches the other side. And you can actually take paint on your finger. You don't have to use a brush at all if you don't want to. Just follow the same principle. It has to be fluffier and a little taller in the middle and have nice uh, pointy ends. And the bottom needs to be a bit more transparent. I'll add a couple more on top. I will do those with a finger for sure because I want them really transparent. You see, nice and light. Or you can do them with a brush if you want, a little more defined. So many ways to do the clouds. All right, that's a good cloud combination here. Don't really want to be any any more clouds, but you can if you want to. Again, just follow the same principle. Um, fluff in your middle, pointy ends. And another thing I want to do almost right away here, actually, just because we're still using white and it's going to be done with white. Is I'm going to just take a little bit of white on my brush again, the same medium brush, and I want to go on the bottom here, and I want to add a little wavy line, not very visible. So do you see it's more transparent here, where my water meets the sand? Maybe even a few of those. So just take a little bit of white for this, or you can even water down your white a little bit, because you will you will see it's going to be a bit more transparent. I just used a wet brush and straight white paint, not watered down, but because my brush was wet enough, it kind of watered down my paint a little.
I'm not really um, worried about the side when it comes to those waves because I'm going to have flowers there. And I know it. So I'm not focusing on the side. If you want to make it exact same on both sides, go for it. It's not going to be a mistake. It's just going to be a little bit of extra work. Um, so again, totally up to you. If you just do this until the middle, maybe a little bit further than the middle through, that's more than enough. But if you want to do all the way, that's okay too. Yeah, Holly, my acrylic is pretty thin. So if your acrylic is thicker and it's more like a heavy acrylic that is like you put a brush stroke and you can see the thickness of it, water it down. This is the acrylic that I use and we generally, most of the time we use for, the, for events. Sometimes we use different, but this is what we use most of the time. It is a student grade acrylic start brand. We get it in curries, but um, there are a lot of similar type of paints that are student grade acrylic available in stores. Depending on where you live, uh, you might have that too, or you might have just something very similar. It's just like entry level acrylic. It is always a little thinner than professional acrylic, but that's what makes it entry level. It is easier to work with. Professional acrylic is harder to work with because it is thicker. So if you guys happen to have a thicker acrylic, just water it down. It will work exactly the same, except you will need to water it down. So I'm gonna give you guys another minute to do this wavy here. All right, I see some good to goes. That's good, guys. And for those of you who are actually um, painting with us on Zoom as well. We are having four uh, three days only today, tomorrow, and Sunday, because today's Friday, right? So today, tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. So April 9th to April 11th, we're having a massive sale on Zoom events and recordings because it's our first year anniversary. Yay! We're one year. So we're doing 30% off all Zoom events and 50% off all recordings, which is like the best deal. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, check it out. Um, you can see the post for it and instructions on how to receive the coupon codes for that on our Facebook page. But yeah, just letting you know and let me know when you guys are ready. Thank you. And here is the post. I send you a link in chat here so you don't have to browse the internet. So you can just click on that link and just get the right to that post. Right, good to go. Perfect.
Nice little more thumbs up. So that's perfect, guys. My cloud here turned a little yellow accidentally. That's okay. We'll cover it. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Me too. Me too. All right. So in my case, by the way, this is dry already. Do you see? I got nothing. So it needs to be a bit on a drier side here for us to start adding um, layers of our flowers. But I kind of want to start, I want to get on that. So if it's not dry for you yet here, that's okay. Leave it for now. You don't have to do that. Or grab a hair dryer, pull out your hair dryer and start hair drying it. Um, but if not, you can just leave it for now and do the first layer later. But I'm going to move on to this first layer here. Because again, our flowers are going to take more than one layer because we're not adding them on a white canvas. We're adding them over already colored background. So it's going to take two layers of the first coat color. And then we're going to need to do more layers of different colors. So I'm going to start by making pink. Whatever base color you want to use for your flower, that's the color you're going to make right now. So this is the color. For me personally, it's going to be pink. So I'm going to make pink. And again, if you want to replace it with orange or teal or purple, go for it. I've seen this painting done with many different colors of flowers last time we've painted it, and it looks really beautiful. So if you want to replace the color, that's totally fine. Or you can do one flower pink and second flower with like orange or purple. You can do two different colors. I'm going to start by using my medium brush, and I'll scoop some white on the side. And then to that white, I'm gonna add some red, mix it up. Make pink, there's no particular shade of pink that I'm looking for, just pink in general, any pink will work. At least for me. And then I'm gonna put my um, medium brush aside and I'm gonna grab my small brush and with a small brush I'm gonna do an outline for my flower. Let's put this one aside, let's grab this one and with the same pink I'm gonna do an outline. So I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna identify where the middle of my flower is going to be. I'll say somewhere here. Now from that middle I'm gonna put a flower petal up I'm going to do five flower petals. So they're going to go like this. Two sides. And then a wiggly, wavy line on top. And that's how all my flower petals are going to be. So that's one flower. And then I'm gonna move right away in a second one and it's gonna be smaller. And in my case, they're gonna be overlapping just a little. If you don't want them to overlap, that's okay too. They don't have to, you can space them enough so they're not touching each other. But I have no problem with them overlapping. I actually like the look. All right, so here are my two flowers. Now I can wash off my small brush. Actually, I want a different color here. And then I can wash off my small brush, put it aside, and grab my medium brush. And I'll fill in my flowers with a medium brush.
this is the first layer of our flowers. And again, when you guys have it, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Tell me that you're ready. And now we'll move to the next step. All right, more good to go, perfect. <laughs> That's funny. Yep, dogs would do that. All right, guys, I see lots more good to go. So I think that means we're going to move to our island. So let me show you the island on this painting closer first. It looks like two humps in a way. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna do them in green first. And then we're gonna dab up the edge. So we're gonna do them in just one line first, color it in, then dab up the edge. After that, we're gonna make um, darker color. So we're gonna take some blue or darker green, whichever. They're really gonna blend. Um, and then with that, we're gonna add some darkness. Later, we're gonna add some black and we're gonna add some red. If you want to be fancy, you can even as you go on the first layer, do multiple shades of green. The more shades of green you can fit in this, the fancier it's going to look in the end. But just one shade of green is also enough. So completely up to you. Yeah, so we'll do that. I'm going to be using my medium brush again, but you see which brush seems like the best fit out of what you have and based on the size of your canvas. So I'm going to grab my medium brush and I'm going to make some green. So that's yellow, blue, and white. I'll mix them up. You can mix them up in whichever proportion depends on which shade of green you're trying to get. I'm getting more like a medium light green. That's the shade of green I'm, I'm hoping for. So that's the color I'm going to make, like a grass green in a way, medium light green. And with this color, I'm going to add my islands. So I'm going to start with a bigger one and the smaller one. I'll color them in right away.
And right away, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dab out the edge to make them look fluffier and there are like fluffy trees growing there. So I'm gonna use my brush and I'm gonna dab. Because I'm using square brush, I'm gonna dab with a corner of my brush. If you have a pointy brush, you can just dab with the tip of your brush. It really depends what brush you're using. So we just wanna dab them up so they look like there's some very fluffy, healthy greenery growing on that island. And dab up the middle a little bit too so you have a different texture. So it doesn't look linear. Yay, you're very welcome guys. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Quick losing my paper towel. I actually even want to add a little bit more to the corners with a small brush. So it doesn't get into my water. And then another thing I want to do right away with the same green, just because we're on this paint already. Uh, so we might as well add some greenery to our flowers here. So with a small brush and the same paint, hopefully you mix enough. If not, you can always mix another color. It doesn't have to match perfectly, but I thought we'd utilize this color. So I'm going to grab a bit more of it with a small brush, and I'll add the leaves. Now let me show you how the leaves look like. They're very similar to the flower petals, except they're more extended and they have a pointy end. So it's not like leaf like that. It has those wiggly edges very similar and in a style to a flower petals. So what are we gonna do? We will add the middle line and then a wiggly edge and a wiggly edge. You need to have the pointy end though, that's important. So I'm gonna start on the first one. I'm gonna put somewhere right here. So I'm gonna start by putting a line. I need more paint, sorry guys, give me a second. Get some paint. So do you see just line, right? And now from that line, I'm gonna add that wavy end and have a nice pointy tip there. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And, and I'll move to the next one. Wow, the couple. You can position yours differently. It doesn't have to be all positioned exactly the same. It's totally fine. And once you have all of them, color in and color them in. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more green paint. I'll color them all in, the same exact paint. Not changing anything.
All right, and the last thing that I wanna do with this is I wanna add all those few wiggly lines. Do you see them here? You can do this either with this color or later once we move to darker color, but I wanna do them right away. So I'm just gonna take my small brush and add a line or two, depends how many you want and how many fits in your painting. Or you can add one here and one on the top or on the other side. They don't both have to be in the exact same spot, unless you want them. All right. Boy, I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna leave it. All right, guys, and after that, I'm gonna go back to my island and I'm gonna add the darkness here. So you can do it in straight blue, you can do it in dark green, whatever works. What I'm gonna do is to this green, which I still have a little, I'm gonna add more blue. And do you see it creates this bluer and darker green. It is still green, but it's much colder. And with this color, I'm gonna dab. So I'm not gonna be adding any more lines here, just dabs. And I'm not gonna dab all the way to the top. So I'm gonna start from the bottom, dab a bit more there, and then lightly spread it to the top. And you don't have to go all the way to the bottom either, but there's, you see still a little bit off earlier green visible? That's okay, because we're gonna add a black there, so you're gonna cover that with black. And I'm gonna lightly spread it up. So do you see it's super solid here? but a bit more transparent as you go higher up. So that's my second color there. And then I'm gonna wash off my medium brush and I'm gonna move to my small brush. And either with the same color or just something similar, you just want darker color for this step, darker green. So with some sort of darker green and a small brush, I'm gonna add a few details to our leaves here. And what they're gonna look like is I'm gonna flick from the bottom of the leaf out a couple of brush strokes. You see, it adds a little bit of darkness to the middles, middles of the leaves. And again, right after I'm gonna wash off uh, my small brush. I don't need any more green anywhere. So I'll wash it off. Yeah, and it would be the time for us to add a second layer of pink. So you can go back to your medium brush, your pink, and just go ahead and add a second layer just to make that more of a solid background for the flower. If your painting doesn't need it, maybe your paint has a better coverage than mine and it goes super solid right away, in which case just don't do it. Skip the step. And you see, it may look a little different in color right now, like I'm using the exact same paint. 
that it looks lighter, it's because when my paint is wet, it always looks lighter. As it dries, it gets a shade darker, so it will get that darker color as soon as it dries. Oops. All right, I'll give you guys a minute to do this. And again, when you have it, give me the thumbs up. I am looking forward to seeing how your paintings turn out, guys. Literally can't wait. That's like something I always look forward to. Yes, me too, me too, definitely. They're very colorful. All right, guys, our next color I'm gonna move to is going to be black. And I will be using both of my brushes. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and my small brush here. And I'm actually gonna start with a small brush. So I'm gonna take a small brush, a little bit of black, and I'm gonna add a line right on the bottom of the island. And then from there, I'm going to actually water down my black a little bit because I find that it is really uh, makes a big difference when you water down your black. It's much, much easier to make good fine lines with more liquid black. So I water down my black. I'm going to just water down black. I'm going to add a couple of brush strokes on a water going down. So they're going to be a bit longer, closer to the top. And as I go lower, they're going to be shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Now, this painting only has two colors on the water. It has black and it has white. However, I want to show you guys, and not show you, more like tell you guys what you could do if you wanted to take it to a next level. And what you could do if you wanted to take it to a next level and make it just a little more intricate, not that it's not enough intricate already, it is. This painting has a lot of elements. It has a lot going on. But if let's say you don't mind sp spending another hour maybe on it, or just however long it takes you. What you could do, you could add a couple more brush strokes like that in a dark blue, very, very dark blue. Or like something 
similar to that. So if you go back to that color and add a couple of brush strokes in the same manner, maybe not right away because you want your black to be dry for that. You don't want to accidentally streak it into black and it to turn a gray and smudge it all over the place. So maybe wait after your um, until your black dries and then go and add a couple extra brush stroke with the dark blue and light teal. Go back to that light teal or similar color. It doesn't have to be a perfect match. And with this, add a couple of brush strokes and streak them up into a dark section too. So those extra two colors will actually bring you to a whole new level. It's the same with every part of this painting. The more shades you can incorporate, the more intricate and polished it's going to look. So it really is about how many hours you put into it and how many shades. So that's just an option for you. Again, it doesn't need it. It looks beautiful without it. But if you want to, you can. Now I'm gonna wash up my personal brush and I'll grab my medium brush. And I'll grab a little bit of black here. And with this, I'm gonna dab up from that line up into the island. You don't wanna cover up all your green, so don't dab too much with this. You need to be careful how much black you're dabbing. And also make sure you only use a little bit. You see how transparent it is? It's not blobby. It's very light, light and fluffy. It looks like actual greenery there. So that's very important that you don't make it blobby. So just a tiniest touch of paint on your brush and you don't push on your brush. You just lightly tap it over the background. All right, that's our island. And then I'm going to wash off my medium brush and I'll put it aside. Aw, thank you. And I'm going to move on to my flowers. And I will use red paint. So straight red, not mixed with anything. So I'm going to grab some white, uh, sorry, not white, small brush, some red. You can water it down if you find that your paint is a little too thick because again, we're, we need to make fine elements. And sometimes what I find with the paint is that it gets too clumpy and it doesn't give you ability to make fine lines. So if that's the case for you, water down your paint. For me personally, with red and any color that's not black, I wouldn't usually water it down because my paint is pretty liquid as is. But because I put my paint on a palette about an hour ago, it's a little bit dried up. So I'm gonna need to water it down to make nice fine lines. And with this, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add outline to both of my flowers, but we're not trying to match the line precisely. If this outline goes a little bit out or a little bit in, that's okay. Unless that bothers your brain, and that's totally fine, in which case you can do precise outline. It, I personally love this messier look, so I'm gonna go a little bit out and a little bit in. But again, if you would like precision, that's fine. You can do precise outline. Do you see what I mean by a little bit out, little bit in? Oh, and you need to decide which flower is going to be uh, above and on top of the other one. So for me, this one is going to be over the small one. If the small one is going to be over the big one, then make sure whatever they overlap, you only see the top one. The flowers are not transparent, so you cannot see both. And after that, I'm gonna start adding flicks from the inside out. And you can make them straight, you can make them slightly curved. That's completely up to you. The only thing you wanna make them a little longer in the middle and a little bit smaller, shorter on the sides. You're always gonna flick from the inside out. 
So that's important too, because if you flick from the outside in, you're going to have those clumpy edges. You're not going to have that nice pointy tip. So always, always, always flick from the inside out and use the small pointy brush for this. So one flower, and I'm gonna do the same thing on my second one. All right, here they are. So I'm going to put them aside. Thank you. And I'm going to take a little bit of the same red, but now on my medium brush. And this time I'm going to flick, um, sorry, not flick, dab just a little bit of it on an island to make it look like there are very colorful um, flowers growing there or trees that have flowers growing on them. So there is a bit more color to it. So just a little bit, again, you only want to use a tiny touch of paint on your brush because you don't want it blobby. You want it nice and light and transparent. And also, you're just lightly tapping the surface. No pushing, no pulling, no rubbing. I just added a little bit more there. Again, if you want to make it more intricate, Add another color. Choose a second color, add it in there. It will still look good. All right, guys, I'll give you a minute. And as always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. All right, guys, and after this, I'm going to move to white. So I need a bit more white here, and I'll use small brush. So I'm going to take a little bit of white, and the first few things that I'm going to add is going to be some horizontal lines on our water starting from the top. So in my case, my black, you see, is already absolutely dry. If your black is not dry yet, take more time. You need your black to be dry, or at least somewhat dry, because you don't want to accidentally get it will smudge and turn gray, not what we're looking for. So I'm just going to start by little brush strokes, and I'm going to start 
um, like a bulk of brush strokes going from here down. I'm getting a little more as we go. So I'm gonna start here. They're really tiny ones. And then you see, as I go down, I get more of them and they get a little bit longer. And a little more visible as well. And then I'm gonna start wrapping them into this rounded shape. So I don't want them that straight anymore. So the ones that go lower, I'm gonna add slight curve here. Just a little. can make some of them wavy too it doesn't they don't all have to be straight like for example here closer to the edge I'm gonna add a couple more of the wavy ones all right if you like cleaner look you can totally skip that this is more than enough too All right, I'm happy with this. You see I added a generous amount of white here. You can totally get away with half of this white. It's not super necessary for this painting to have as much. I personally just like um, a lot of white. As you can see on this one, there's a lot of white too. But you could totally have less and it will still look fantastic. But you do need some. That's important to have some white. All right, guys, I'll give you another minute to do this.
All right, guys, so now I want to add a little bolt on top. So that bolt is very simple, and I'm going to do it in white first, and then I'm going to let it dry, and then I will add a red uh, sail on top, but it has to dry for that. So that's why I'm going to add it right away so it can start drying. I'm going to start by putting a vertical line around here, just one vertical line. And from that line, I'm going to add a sail. On the actual boat. I'll clear that in. And this boat needs to dry up a little bit. And guys, if this is your first time painting with us, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, if you don't know what we do, we do the free live events like this one about twice a week here on YouTube. So feel free to subscribe. That way YouTube will notify you when we go live. So we always have all, everything scheduled in advance though. So you always know what is coming on which day. And you can see the full calendar on our Facebook. I'll send you a link to our event section on Facebook so you can see everything that we have coming up in the next about month to month and a half. So then you can see if you're interested in any of those. We also have Zoom events that we have pretty much every day. Yeah, so we have all kinds of things. welcome all right I see some good to go and here's a link to all our coming events so you can see the any of the future ones you're interested in or just generally check out what do we have coming up in the next month ish All right, guys, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of weight on my medium brush, and with this, I'm going to dab up the middles, just using the corner of my brush because I'm using medium square brush, but if you use medium point, it's going to be the tip, or if you can use a small brush, that's okay too. 
So I'm going to dab up the very middle of both of the flowers. So the middles of the flowers. So here are the middles of my flowers. And then I'm going to take some white on my small brush. And I'm going to add just a little bit of white on the outline of both of the flowers. So this one, I'm going to try to aim to have it more on this pink part, not around it, not around my red outline, but before it in a way. Let me see again, it's not a perfect match. I'm making it a little bit on a messier side, which is a preference. If that's not your preference, that's okay. You can make it more precise. So here are my two flowers. And I'm also going to add a couple of dots on this flower petals anywhere you want, but I would say closer to this outline, not everywhere. Don't try to evenly spread them, just a little here and there. And after that, I'm going to add a white outline on the leaves too. So again, I'm not making it a perfect match. The same way that I did with my flower petals. Done. No more white. I added all the white that I need to. And the next color I'm going to be adding is black. So I'm going to take just a little bit of black on my brush and I will add a couple flicks in the leaves from the bottom out. And just a little bit on the mid in the middles of my flowers. So from that Debbie circle out as well. Just a little, you don't want too much. You see, adds so much depth there. Now for this step, it's very important that you flick from the inside out again. And you wanna have a longer flicks closer to the middles of your flower petals. 
and then shorter flicks closer to the edge of your flower petals. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other one as well. All right, that is done. If you want to, you can add a couple dots in black around to that white circle. But if you don't want to, you can skip that. They look wonderful already. It's just an extra element. So just a few, you can, you can hardly see them really. You see a few dots. Not a big difference, but I mean, it's a good look for those who like those kind of things. And I will also add birds. So in my case, I'm only adding three birds. Do you see there are three birds there? And they look like check marks, but um, you can have as many as you want. I usually try not to start from the end. I just start from the dot. So I put a dot, that's the middle of my bird. And then from that dot, I flick from the dot out towards one side. And then I do the same line from the dot out towards another side. I find that it looks better is my favorite way to do it. That way your bird's bird ends up a little bit thicker in the middle, as it should. I'll do two more birds, a little smaller on the sides. You can have way more birds if you want to. It doesn't have to be just three. And then guys, after that, the last thing I'll do on this painting is I'm going to take some red again and I will add it on the sail. So I'm going to color my sail with red. In my case, it's pretty dry. Yeah, it, yeah. So I can go ahead, if yours is not dry, give it some time to dry first. And that is pretty much it. Now, of course, you have to sign it. That's the most important part. So after you did all that, you have to choose a good spot and put your name, your initials, or your signature, anything that you would like. And if you guys haven't done your edges as we went, feel free to do your edges. You can either color match them. Do you see this is color matching? I did it as I went, right? But you can do it after the fact as well. After your painting is done, you can just go back and try to color match your edge to the best of your ability. Um, or alternatively, easier option, if you haven't done your edges yet, is you choose one color that is present on your painting. So you paint the entire edges this color. So for example, blue, medium, or light blue, um, sand color it has to be present around the edge though so you can do that or my favorite way when i don't have time or desire to do the edges what i would do is i would paint my edges with black if i don't want to do them as i go because i'm holding my canvas or any other reason or i forget 
Um, I will usually just choose black and I will do all the edges with black. And why I personally like it, because black makes all colors up front pop. And it kind of serves, serves like a frame. So it really frames your painting. So that's a good option too, but I, I would say color matching is the first choice, always. Because it looks really nice. And that's pretty much it. Now guys, um, if you have questions, I will still be here for a few minutes because I want to answer all your questions if you have them. If not, that's okay. And if you want to show your painting to us, I would love to see it. Uh, please feel free to post it on event page. I'll send you a link in chat here in a second for event page. So you don't have to search around. You can just click on like link. It'll bring you right there. That way we have all the results in the same place. So you can take a look how other people did it and how everyone's paintings turned out. And we can see that too. But no pressure if you don't want to do that. That's okay. And last thing, no, actually two things. If you haven't followed us on YouTube yet, do that because we go live a lot. And guys, if you had fun and you want to tip me, I will never say no to that. It's not necessary. These events are free. We don't charge for them. We love doing them. We enjoy this. We love painting with you. But if this is your way of saying thank you, you can do that. And I will post a link to PayPal in comments here that you can use for tipping. All right, I posted a PayPal link and I'm going to post a link to event page so you can uh, post your results on event page. All right, and here's the link to um, event page where you can post all your results. All right, that is in chat here as well. Now, does anyone have questions? Questions, concerns, anything you got. Yay, you're welcome. And guys, if for example, you weren't able to do today, again, I'll repeat myself because um, I know everyone is joining us at a different time. So if you just joined us now, you can always um, do it later whenever you are ready for it and available and you have time. The video is going to stay here forever. So you can do it anytime. Yay, I'm glad. Um, where I'm from, I am from Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. Yes, thanks. Um, my first language is uh, yes. My first language is Russian, so therefore an accent. <laughs> Thank you. And sorry, guys, I apologize. Sometimes I mix up words because you know I actually speak three languages, so sometimes it's going something goes wrong in my brain <laughs> and it forgets word in one language and decides to say word in different language. So I apologize for that. All right. Yay, welcome. Well, that was fun. Thanks for joining me, guys. I had a lot of fun teaching you. Show us your paintings. All right, I'm going to let you all finish in peace. Thanks for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. Bye, everyone.